So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Earlier today we discussed the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I gave my first take, but the iPhone 11 is probably the phone most people are gonna go with. I went with probably an unpopular color in the white, but neither here nor there, it's still the same phone. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 699 iPhone and see if this is really gonna be worth it here. I'm gonna give my first impressions, I didn't watch any other videos, before making this video, so it's gonna be totally a first impressions here. Let's see what this thing is all about. Coming up, let's go. So here is the Apple iPhone 11. Now, this is the replacement for the iPhone XR. But the neat thing is that the iPhone XR was not discontinued. So you can still get yourself an iPhone XR for $599 or $100 less than this phone. However, it might be worth it to you to pay an extra $100 to get that wide angle camera that does come to this phone. Now, first thing that I wanna talk about with the iPhone 11 is the price because that is gonna be the key thing about this phone and it's gonna probably be the phone for most people as they see that massive gap in price between this phone and the 11 Pro Max. I mean, we're talking about, you know, what is it, 699 to like 1099 here for the 11 Pro Max. So you're talking like $400 difference. So that's huge for some people. And I think this is gonna be the phone most consumers gravitate towards, at least people who don't need those extra cameras. So I expect this to be probably the best seller once again. Now, first thing I noticed about the body is that it's basically exactly the same as the iPhone XR. Um, this is an aluminum edge though here. So not quite as premium as the stainless steel you're gonna see for the 11 Pro Max. Now, also I noticed a little detail around the camera. They have like these metal like inserts that cover the camera on the edges and they're not as shiny as what we see on the 11 Pro series. So those are not quite as, you know, glossy or, you know, flashy looking, I would say, as you see on the Pro. Now the Apple logo does come down just a bit and there's no iPhone logo at the bottom, no headphone jack. And one thing that is a little bit disappointing about this, this is not an unboxing, but in this box, I opened it up and I seen that I don't have a fast charger once again. So iPhone 11 giving you that old school slow charger for the iPhone. Now, at this price point, I still think they should include a fast charger even in this box, but it is a separator between this and the 11 Pro. And on the front, you can see that 6.1 inch liquid retina display here. This still has the same LCD panel as the 10R, same resolution, same PPI. I think it's even the same brightness, so it's basically the same thing. We do have notch up here, pretty thick bezels along the edges as the 10R had. And uh, we do have our volume markers here, little silent switch, nothing at the top. On the right here, we do see ourselves that fat power button also doubles as the Siri button. The iPhone 11 Pros, I think the cameras are a little bit more flush with the body here than like last year's generation where you could see that big hump of a camera just sticking off the back of the 10R. Now, one thing I'm noticing with the iPhone 11 is that it's still a glossy back on here. It's not that matte texture you get on the Pro. So that could be another reason to go with the Pro if you're interested. Overall, my first impressions on the build, the body, classic Apple, aluminum, glass, it's just simple and it just works and I think it's a pretty looking phone. It's just nothing special, but really a simple, classic, clean design here and it definitely takes people who are on an older iPhone, wanna do a trade-in and wanna get something modern, but they wanna stay in their old school style iPhone prices. The 11's perfect for you. So let's talk a quick second about the display. Now, again, we noticed that over the year that most people didn't really care who bought the 10R about the resolution. They really couldn't tell too much of a difference and that's gonna hold true once again. Now, I think if you have a trained eye, you could definitely see the difference between like the XDR display and this one, but the average consumer, the person probably buying this phone is probably not going to care whatsoever. You also are going to get True Tone here and you also get Night Shift as well as the dark mode that comes to iOS 13 here, which launches stock on the iPhone 11. In addition, we do have haptic press here for the iPhone 11 that also comes to you the 11 Pro series. So they're pretty much even in that respect and there's no advantage to going to that phone over this phone when it comes to the haptic press. Of course, gestures were the big thing if you were on an older iPhone and they're just as smooth as ever here 
on the iPhone 11. So overall, I think this display, if you really still like the Apple LCD technology, if you don't wanna to go to an OLED panel, you're gonna love the iPhone 11's display. It might not be the highest resolution, but it's still a very good display. It's got good viewing angles. It's uh, definitely colorful enough. And yes, I know a lot of people who follow the tech industry are gonna say, at this price point, you could get such a better display. You might be able to do so, but you're not gonna get the Apple software and you know the iPhone. So basically, this is good for people who can settle for a little bit less here with a cheaper iPhone like this one. And notice I said cheaper, not cheap, because there's nothing cheap about the iPhone 11. It feels pretty solid. Now, I wanna talk about the software just a little bit. iOS 13 comes here to the iPhone 11 from the start, and basically, you get a few changes here. The dark mode is the big one. I've been mentioning it over and over again because it really is the thing I think most people are gonna really love about this software. Also, you can see haptic press is now on this phone. We talked about that a little bit. This awesome feature in settings allows you to silence unknown callers. Reminders gets an update. The volume HUD is a little bit different. Also, you know, you can do the little silent switch. It's a little bit different as well. There's a lot of just cleanups, refinements here, and the iOS for the iPhone 11 is just gonna run very smooth as well. And it's gonna get an update already very shortly here, I think on the 24th. Correct me if I'm wrong, they're gonna be updating to iOS 13.1. But yeah, this is definitely still a very strong suit for the Apple iPhone 11, and that is that it does have iOS on board. This is one of the main sellers of this phone period. Like that's why people buy iPhones still is because of the iOS software. So going into settings, I wanna show you the wallpapers. You can see they do have different dynamic wallpapers here for the iPhone 11 than you get for the iPhone 10R as well as for the iPhone 11 Pro Max and 11 Pro. So there you go, you could kind of see what they do look like. And they are dynamic, so if we set them here, let me set this one. And then I turn on the dark mode, let's go home and let me turn on the dark mode really quickly here. You're gonna see that it does change. So all of them are dynamic, which is pretty awesome. So nice little inclusion of new wallpapers here for the iPhone 11. Okay, so storage out of the box is 64 gigabytes. Now I wish it was a little bit more for the iPhone, but one thing they did improve was the RAM. It goes from three gigabytes of RAM on the 10R to four gigabytes of RAM here for the 11. So pretty good little update there if you care about RAM. It, it doesn't really change the experience too much because iOS is so optimized and it's pretty smooth. And I mean, it's been smooth for years. I mean, really, this never really changes the experience too much, but it's nice to know that you have a little bit more RAM. Okay, so let's talk about the cameras. The major deal here is the inclusion of the wide angle. Now, first of all, I gotta say, I do like the way this setup looks. It looks pretty clean on the back. If I hit the camera, let me go ahead and open up the 10R, put the 10R here for a photo test. And you could see we can go wide there. Now, one thing I'm noticing about the wide angle camera here for this device is that, again, no fish eyeing, no distortions on the edges. So that's pretty good if you care a lot about not having that on your phone. Not having a fish eye or any distortion on the edges of a wide angle is something that some phones don't really get right sometimes. So if we hit it again, there's no way to go 2X because this phone does not have a telephoto. But you can hold down the camera and bring over a video here and start making a video for the iPhone. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like what you can do with stories and Instagram. So we have portrait modes right here, panoramic modes, as well as slow-mo and time-lapse. Now up at the top, if you go to portrait mode right here, so in portrait, you can now change the lighting in the background of your portrait. So if you like taking portraits, that's a cool thing as well. Now the settings for camera are still in the settings app. You still cannot access them directly from the app itself. But if we go to record, if I do 4K 60 frames, which is pretty amazing for this price point that you can even make video at that resolution. If I flip it around to the front, here's the major improvement. The front facing video camera is gonna be just amazing. Also, you can do like a slow motion video from the front camera as well, which is something that you probably might not use too much, but just having it there is pretty cool. I'm not gonna say the trendy word, everybody is starting to try to make a trend. You know what it is, I'm not gonna say it. But um, yeah, you can do that. Also, you have the photo right here and portrait, of course, on the front. And uh, yeah, I just did something really crazy with the camera right there. But overall, this camera I think is just about as good as the 11 Pro. You just don't have 
the telephoto. So if you don't zoom in a lot, you got basically the same camera. But stay tuned for some camera videos on this phone. I will do a couple camera videos on this one to show you some samples and some real world stuff about this camera to see how it does do a little bit more in detail. We were just kind of doing a general overview and first impressions here. Now, when it comes to the speakers, You could see it's dual speakers. It like so it sounds pretty clear at the high volumes. There's nothing really I can, you know, say bad about the speakers. They're gonna be serviceable definitely for anybody who buys this phone. Now you don't have a dongle in the box and you don't have a headphone jack. So if you do use headphone jack, you're gonna have to buy a separate dongle for this phone, which is kind of unfortunate, but hey, that's what happens if you buy an iPhone in 2019. Now this phone also retains Bluetooth 5.0, so if you are gonna be doing uh, things with Bluetooth a lot, it's gonna connect super fast on this device, and I don't, I'm don't, i not sure how the phone call quality is gonna be with this one, I will be looking into that for the full review. So in conclusion, my first impressions are, it feels solid, it feels like a cheaper iPhone 11 Pro as the iPhone 10R felt like a cheaper iPhone 10S, but it's still a really solid iPhone and it's still in line with the prices most people expect from Apple at 699. It's actually cheaper than when the iPhone 10R was launched. So I think that if you're looking for the base model iPhone of 2019, you skip the 10R, it's gonna be a great choice for you if you you didn't ever get the 10R, you have the iPhone 6S, something like that, you might really like this phone. However, if you have a 10R, this one is an easy skip unless you absolutely need that camera. We didn't discuss battery because there's not much in the way of difference. It's one hour extra on the battery. I will test it, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be almost identical to the 10R, but you could just see how much different in height that Apple logo is right there. Overall, it is a refinement on the 10R. It adds a couple features, a little bit better battery life, and uh, a cheaper price tag. So I think Apple's going to continue their success they had with the 10R with this iPhone 11 here. So let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 11. What do you guys want to see on this phone? Let me know down below. Are you guys picking it up? Did you already pre-order it? I would love to hear what you got to say about the 699 iPhone 11. I think it's a winner, and I think it's going to be a one that really sells very well in to this holiday season. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to be well and peace.